good morning. So this is uh, well, our last day of the forum, and I think, um, uh, well, apart from our uh, uh, talking about our own uh, prepared ideas, uh, then we also hope that uh, we could be interacting with each other. So uh, just now, uh, Professor Dai already referred to uh, Franz Fanon's uh, 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 ideas, and so on that one, I will not repeat. I would like to uh, first start by uh, referring to what uh, MP said. Uh, we had MP as the first speaker for this forum, and uh, MP actually wrote a long paper well, uh, well be before, well in advance, uh, so that uh, uh, we could be having um, well uh, stimulating and uh, dynamic uh, debates. So uh, I have made a photocopy uh, for, of his paper. So if you like, you can refer to it. Um, so um, MP's uh, uh, idea, I think uh, uh, some of the, of course, uh, after he wrote the paper, uh, many friends uh, read it and then told him, you're too utopian. <laughs> and I think uh, we, always, we are always encountered uh, with this question of being uh, denounced as utopian when we try to put forth something that we can possibly or almost impossibly imagine. Uh, and yet I think um, this uh, question of utopia is uh, extremely necessary. And uh, uh, Francois Houtard, uh, uh, he, he was with us in the, uh, thir in the fourth um, South, South Forum, in the third South South Forum, and uh, his key word was also utopia. But then the utopia is practicable and is possible. So, uh, uh, and, but then I think um, there are many things in MP's paper that we may or may not agree with, and yet there are certain points that I would want to highlight because I actually agree very much uh, with his views. And Erebus and Tong Yi have read uh, his paper thoroughly and have made responses, and to which MP also made another response before he came to the forum. So all these are there either on the reader or they have been photocopied for you. So in MP's paper, he, his, um, he, his, uh, how does he talk about the question of abundance or development? And uh, well, MP says um, the socialist experiments in the 20th century suffer from many features of capitalism, especially the mistaken notion of abundance. I would like to uh, elaborate a little bit more on this question about the problem of uh, abundance because the whole question about abundance is embedded in the notion of development. And abundance is mostly conceived in materialist terms. Uh, because although we talk about happiness or other immaterial desires, uh, then they are always they always have uh, apparently they always have to find the material form in commodities, etc. So I feel uh, MP has um, struck on a very key question because uh, what we are faced with is uh, when we uh, talk about when we critique capitalism. It's not only the question of uh, exploitation of labor and the question of poverty, to which we are all very familiar with. But then uh, the critique is also uh, how this model uh, is in the organization of our way of life and of relationships between humans and our relationships with nature. So while we have uh, the notion of abundance or better material life or the question in embedded in the whole notion of development, um, we have this um, uh, 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 very romantic idea that, uh, or in the past, uh, maybe a century ago, we, there was this romantic idea that there's uh, uh, endless and infinite resources, natural or human, that you could resort to uh, so that you can continue to develop the economy. And yet, if we just have, we have uh, referred to the simple fact of the question of uh, ecological crisis that we are uh, uh, encountered with and the very imminent uh, collapse of, of the entire civilization and of humanity and possibly with the, all the uh, threats of nuclear war, possibly the end of the planet itself. 
So in these times, then we have to be very radically revisiting um, the, the notions of the uh, continuous and desirable development of productivity. Because in the idea of productivity itself, we have the, uh, the, the whole uh, logic of uh, development and so-called uh, material abundance. So uh, for, um, uh, I think uh, MP uh, talked about the question of abundance and I think, um, well, maybe uh, the best uh, 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 example to take is the declaration by Deng Xiaoping uh, in the early 1990s that the only rock hard truth is development. It is rock hard, huh? it is the only truth. But of course, we are also familiar with his other uh, uh, idiomatic saying, uh, so you have to grope on the stones, on the rocks, uh, while you are wading across the stream and the river. So there's also the certainty in the, in the idea that we have to develop and the uncertainty of how to do it. Uh, that, uh, and so you see this uh, very paradoxical proposal that come hand in hand. And uh, so, uh, well, because uh, I have only very little time, so I will just highlight some of the points and we can go into the debates uh, in the afternoon. The second question is, um, MP quoted uh, Marx's um, idea about the ending of the contradiction between town and countryside. So it's on the first, first page of MP's paper. But then um, the question is, we, we see the huge uh, polarizations and differentiations between uh, urban and rural, town and countryside, and yet how do we end the contradiction? In the mainstream discourse and in the mainstream practice, the idea is to end this contradiction by, end, by putting an end to the countryside to agriculture and to the peasants. Because the, the whole imaginary is to go for urbanization, because urbanization represents a, a better and more comfortable or cozy way of uh, living uh, than being in the so-called backward countryside. And you can, you can do away with small peasant agriculture because you can have all the mechanized uh, agriculture and the machines can replace the, the labor. Uh, in, the, in the production, so agricultural products are produced in an industrial way. It is industrialized agriculture. As for the peasantry, yeah, so there is this age-old uh, uh, idea that they are the, back, the, the back, backward class, they are the potatoes. <laughs> they can only be the, uh, the class to go into alliance with the revolutionary proletariat. So the, 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 the idea to eliminate the peasants is there. You can find it in many official documents, in the ideology, because no one would like, as if no one would like to continue to be a backward peasant working on the land. So the best way is to do away with the peasantry itself. And you have an industrialized uh, uh, farming uh, workers. So in the whole of China, you see this idea about ending the contradiction uh, but then through what means ending the countryside, the rural, the agrarian, the peasantry. But is this what we want? I think that kind of idea of ending the contradictions uh, is also embedded in the, uh, the, in the notion and the logic of the development, which is based on the Western model of capitalism, uh, without mentioning its plunders and exploitation, as the path for humanity as the ideal progressive way of life. And so we are now in the 100 year of uh, the, uh, uh, the May 4th movement in China. Uh, we are also in India, it's much at the same time that Gandhi put forward the ideas uh, about self-rule. And uh, in these countries, then I think, uh, I always feel that India is a little bit better than China <laughs> in, this, uh, in, this somewhat, uh, uh, in, in some of the reservations it has or is in its inabilities to pursue rapid modernization uh, and industrialization and urbanization. 
So uh, the, the mainstream um, uh, imagination is urbanization and, of course, under modernization. And so I think that is also why we find these apparent contradictions when China was sometimes uh, uh, capitalist, sometimes in the first stage of socialism, sometimes already entered into communism, and then in the 19, early 1980s, it has so-called reverted to the preliminary stage of socialism. And of course, uh, we can see a lot of capitalist characteristics in the Chinese characteristics of the uh, mode of development. So um, uh, I think uh, it, it is not just a question of um, critiquing capitalism, but it's critiquing the whole uh, paradigm of development uh, the whole paradigm of modernization, which is, if we can look globally, based on the 500 years of plunder and massacres and genocide. And that fact is very much um, removed from, our, uh, from the mainstream horizon. So we talk mm, a lot about uh, the, um, the massacres of uh, the massacres during the Second World War of Nazism. We talk about the, the, the massacres of Stalinism, and yet the, the, the massacres of the indigenous populations uh, in, in Latin America and, the late, and also uh, of the, of in Africa, then they are very seldom mentioned, and yet this is integral to the kind of capitalism we see today. So we have to discuss whether there's, pos uh, there's possible capitalism without imperialism or without the, the kind of plunder and exploitation. So, uh, but then MP was trying to uh, call on Gandhi's ideas to propose his idea of ending the contradiction between town and countryside. And what did he propose? He proposed what he called the network of self-reliant village republics in the form of grand oceanic circles, which is, uh, well, uh, from Gandhi's main ideas, the individual, the free individual, the productive individual, the self-reliant individual with his community forms the village republic and they cater for most of their needs, material and immaterial, and, but, but because the needs cannot be fully uh, met uh, in, in that community, so then you have the horizontal circle of oceanic circles. So it is conceived not as a hierarchical uh, structure, it is a horizontal structure, and we have uh, Professor Mohanty who can speak much, much better than I do on this, on this um, uh, idea. So the, this idea, of the network of self-reliant village republics is based is in the village as republic. And there is the federation, but then this uh, network, so the, the, pre, the premise is that it is from micro to macro. So the micro is not more trivial, it is more primary. It is the primary, uh, uh, the micro, the community is the primary uh, base where there is a process of the micro uh, uh, federating with other circles uh, expanding. So you have the, we have the wonderful image uh, that you are, you are in the room, you are pl well placed in the room, and yet the windows are all open, and you have this kind of uh, flow of the, the breeze and of the ideas. So I think um, uh, in this then, MP was trying to uh, 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 envision the possibility of ending the contradiction not by eliminating uh, peasantry, the, the countryside and agriculture, but by having it as the basis where we have uh, the handicrafts of the, all the manufacturers, manufacturing industries as supplementing our basic needs of food and clothing and shelter. So uh, that is why I feel that um, if we take uh, MP's ideas uh, seriously, uh, then we, uh, that is uh, also one, the way, one way we could theorize all the local community uh, endeavors that we are seeing in different parts of the world. They are micro, they may be fragmented, they may, have, uh, they may be under a lot of challenges, and yet they are the basis, they are the seeds from which will grow 
uh, this uh, uh, better world, which can be a world uh, that we can imagine for peace. So, um, uh, so then um, MP again, she, he talked about, uh, he, he quoted uh, Luxembourg as saying that the natural end of capitalism is barbarism, not socialism. It is the natural end if we are not to intervene rigorously uh, into the process. And we actually see that this is a, it will be a very natural logic for all of us to be carried into this catastrophe. So uh, that means uh, that requires our conscious intervention. And of course, then there's all the debate about the vanguard, the party, and the community. But we can, we can go into that later. Because uh, for MP, it's not the vanguard of the party. He has a kind of um, a technicians, a technical uh, corp, or, or the vanguards that form uh, the kind of micro-enterprise consultants uh, that he was talking about, where uh, there would be the engineers, the scientists, the teachers, the health workers that work together with the communities to ensure their livelihood and their well-being. And, um, but of course, uh, MP is not uh, talking like a dreamer. He, all his ideas are based on 40, uh, actually uh, over 50 years Actually, no, it's over 60 years mm -hmm. of solid work in Kerala itself with the, uh, with the People's Planning Campaign, with the KSSP, and also later on in the All India uh, People's Science Network. So uh, if you're interested, you can look at his um, uh, uh, biography about his work and the ideas. So uh, from his own experience, this is possible. And, uh, but of course, with a lot of uh, problems and a lot of constraints. Um, so on another point, then uh, I think that is also very important when we talk about the idea of the common. Uh, MP quotes uh, Marx as saying that we are not the owners of the earth, but we are only its beneficiaries, and we are bound to pass it on to coming generations in better conditions. I think if we are asked, how are we doing? Uh, how are we being responsible to the next generations? I think we will all be uh, in shame and in guilt. Uh, some of the problems then we do not bring themselves, but then we are also part of the problem and hopefully part of the solution. But then what is this world uh, that we are going to pass on to the next generation? in 10 years, in 20 years, or the, the even more disastrous question is, do we have a world, a planet to pass on to our next generations? So uh, this idea about the ownership of the earth, then I think uh, this is also the basis of the pro of our, in, in our proposing the idea of the common. I don't think uh, there is a, a kind of a, the common as an entity, as a pre-existing concept, that we follow, there's a model to follow. I feel that the common somehow is that uh, when we discuss this concept and also to look at practices that are relevant to this concept, we, uh, we look at uh, different situations in different historical conjunctures where we, can, we, are, uh, we are based on the specific relationships in the community and also the relationship of this community in relation to the, um, to, to, uh, the state, to, to, to transnational capital, to, to, to other, um, uh, uh, in, in, and, and to the nat and to nature. So if we are to get over the idea of uh, replacing public property or state property, uh, uh, replacing it, Re uh, replacing private property with state or, or uh, public property, then uh, of course it looks, uh, it is uh, sometimes very progressive in some ways. And yet we are still uh, constrained in the framework of property. And which is also why we see in the process of ch in China in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, then there was this process of turning uh, uh, publicly owned property into state property and then conveniently turning that into private property. 
and we have to look at that experience of on how that was done with all the rhetoric uh, and propaganda about the inefficiency and bankruptcy of uh, enterprises, etc. So I think uh, on the question of the common, then um, it is also this question about the, the property and the, the ways in which uh, the, um, the uh, uh, so-called uh, resources uh, are organized. And, uh, and I would like to stress again that I, I agree with uh, MP's idea that the seeds of a new society has to have to grow from within. And then when it is strong enough, it's burst. They burst. So um, uh, then MP, well, then uh, that is the, well, I, uh, well, I would like to uh, well, invite you to read his paper uh, carefully. There are many things also I may or may not agree with, but then um, we can see how MP was uh, base, uh, basing on his own uh, actual experience in Kerala and in working in the, lo in the local communities. He was proposing the kind of local self-government where they are structured basically on uh, watershed systems because the soil and the water would be the main uh, uh, the determinants of the, the organization. And his, uh, he gave... Uh, very beautiful examples of how this can be done. So he was saying, well, in a community where you have about uh, 20 to 50 square kilometers with 20 to 30,000 people, how you can organize and manage your own and be as much as possible self-reliant. Okay, so um, I won't go further into that because um, I would like to um, talk about some of the uh, experiments that are exemplary. And I think they exist um, everywhere everywhere in the world, near us, in the neighborhoods. It's the, whole, the question is how we, we can recognize them, give them visibility, and, and also promote their, 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 their further expansion and their uh, sus, uh, sus, uh, sustenance. So uh, this time in the forum, we have heard about the examples of Rojava. And that example is so beautiful because um, it, is, um, the, uh, it, is, it is happening in a very devastated war situation in Syria, as if there's only despair, there's no hope, there's only uh, suffering. And yet, we see the Rojava experiment. I won't go further into that because I think uh, many of you know about it. We also talked about the Mondragon experiment because it is a very famous example. When I was still in university, there was many, many years ago. Uh, then the first thing we talked about at cooperative movement was to learn from the Mondragon experience. So Mondragon experience was also one is also one in which it was in the um, the in the in the uh, very difficult conflict situation in Basque. Uh, when the politically the expression, the articulation for advancement or for, 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 for way forward is a political separation of Basque from Spain. And yet, uh, for Mondragon experiment, they build their local community and then foster their local interactions uh, with or without uh, the kind of um, well, state or state imposed uh, 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 criteria. Uh, we also have uh, the examples, or the many examples from Kerala and also from the cooperatives that Bidud uh, 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 showed us yesterday. And so in India, which is generally perceived as being backward, and actually we find a lot of examples. Uh, we are not romanticizing them, but then they are examples of how in very um, difficult and limited uh, uh, situations, the women especially have been able to work a lot. So the sewa, uh, the etc. Then they are beautiful examples. The Zapatistas, um, they also offer very, very um, uh, good uh, experience in which we can talk, we can learn about uh, how they are building their local communities through the Carico governance. And, uh, but we will hear more of that uh, this afternoon. So I would like to give you very briefly two examples uh, from China. Uh, one example is the example uh, of uh, Yongji. And I think on the first day, you've heard from some of our friends here. Uh, we have Xiao Xiong, uh, who is one of the young person uh, who has gone to Yongji, this community, which welcomes young people. They say, if the young people from our own village or from outside would like to come to our village to do the farming, we give them a, well, a piece of land, 
you plant, you plow that piece of land, you form a cooperative, but at, at the same time, work on creative or other ways. But then at the same time, they have gone through a long process of organizing. And so we have uh, the, our, our friends here, and we also have Xiao Hui. Uh, he's also working uh, on his thesis, basically also on the Yongji example. So there are many, there are many articles written. Uh, it's not as if they don't have uh, difficulties, but then it, I think it's one of the most beautiful examples of uh, local uh, community organizing. But then the, the, the organizing happens when in the 90, early 1980s, then somehow there was this state imposition of the policy to divide up uh, for atomized uh, production. Hence, uh, then the land was divided, but then in Yongji, there was a way in which they tried to later on to recover certain land for collective uh, management and collective planting. So uh, I won't go into the details, but I think um, it is an example of how uh, uh, the, the peasants try to uh, uh, organize on their own um, uh, and to counter the, the, the negative effects of the marketization and atomization from the 1980s on. I'm going to talk about another example, uh, which is the Zhou Jiazhuang example. Uh, well, I didn't know about Zhou Jiazhuang un until the first time that when we organized the first forum. We organized also tours to villages and places in China. And in our team, we had Muto and we had uh, Xiao Hui and, uh, and uh, well, a few of us. So we went to visit this only and the last people's commune in China, which is based on the township level. So we were there, and then uh, in the last seven years, every year, uh, we still went back uh, and tried to follow uh, uh, how it's um, uh, 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 fair, how it's doing. This is an example of uh, a very brave uh, attempt by the peasants to not divide up, because in the 1980s, uh, in the 1982, 81, 82 then the, the state decided that, well, the better way to go forward is to dismantle the people's communes, dismantle collectivism, and go back to uh, individual fa uh, household responsibility system. So everywhere, whether you like it or not, then you are forced to well, uh, dismantle, uh, to be dis to dismantled. And yet in Zhou Jiazhuang, uh, it is a place where with about uh, 14, um, uh, with well, it is, um, let me see the, the figures. Um, so, uh, well, it has a 14,000 uh, population. So it's not big, but then it's the, the, the ideal Gandhian envisioning for a community. So they're divided into 10 uh, production brigades, which means they have about 700 to 1,700 per persons per, 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 per brigade. So in 1982, they discussed among themselves, they said that we have benefited from our collective uh, organizing, which has a history since 1956. So then they said, no, we do not want to divide up. So then, uh, but I won't go, to, go into the details. I promised to finish my, writing my paper uh, after the first forum, and I have since finished writing it. Huh? And Professor <laughs> Dice said, told me, I'm not going to talk to you if you don't write to finish your paper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I'll try to finish it. Huh? But then uh, in this whole process of this, uh, then, then we see uh, a, a very creative and bold uh, effort by the people of this commune uh, to try to still own and manage the land collectively. And then uh, in 1982, as soon as they got the word from the uh, central government to allow them to try. So you try, uh, you see if you do better than the others, and if you don't do better, you divide up. But then they, they made an effort, they tried, and then they did much better than the others. So they were allowed to continue. And then early, as in the early 80s, before there were other, um, for example, uh, free education, free health, etc., they already started that. And they built a nice house, same size for every household in the village. But then, I won't go into that. Um, but then, so I would like, uh, in the remaining uh, five minutes, um, to, to talk about some of the ideas that we can... Well, we, today we talk about the question about post-capitalism. I wonder whether we have to talk about post-civilization. 
uh, well, I'm not trying to be apocalyptic, uh, but then the question is, post uh, the civilization as we know of it now, the capitalist uh, mental, the, the uh, 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 civilization, the, uh, the civilization of plunder and exploitation, uh, are we going to survive it? So uh, I, I, I feel that somehow when we are talking about possible ways forward, uh, so it's not a question of whether it is uh, capitalist or socialist or post-capitalist or post-socialist. It's uh, actually, uh, uh, if, we, we, if we are more practical or pragmatic, it's how to survive the catastrophes that may uh, be, uh, fall on us and still maybe 1% of, uh, the, of, hum of uh, the human population or maybe 10% of the human population may still survive. And MP, again, he was already proposing, because we discuss these ideas all the time, so he was saying that maybe we sh one thing is we should share knowledge and skills as much as possible with the masses so that everybody knows how to grow things, how to uh, uh, make a fire, how to live, uh, uh, on the, uh, how to have the survival tactics so that the, the, the remnants of the population that are left after a nuclear disaster or after severe uh, climate change can still survive. So this is the widespread uh, spread the knowledge. The second thing is we should change our diet. We should try to uh, go for fruits and uh, tuber-based uh, diets, the roots. And uh, so you can see if you walk in the Lingnan Garden, uh, uh, so we have been working on this for two or three years. Uh, so all, all my students at least would know how to do a little bit of farming, etc. We have done courses on farming and on food sovereignty. So, uh, so the question is, uh, maybe uh, the scenario would be the catastrophes. Uh, well, we, Im we can try to see that it, the, the worst may come, but then how can we make the best of it? So, and then uh, very quickly on the question of agency. Yes, we have been talking about uh, the proletariat as the revolutionary class. But then uh, in the book that I've worked uh, with Remy uh, Herrera and with also discussing with our friends and also echoing what um, uh, Lavia Campesina has been talking about uh, on questions of food sovereignty, I wonder if the, if we, when we take the ideas uh, that I just uh, mentioned uh, briefly, then shouldn't the subject uh, of history be the uh, people who could produce food and life? So the, it is not just the peasants in the old sense of the word, because the peasants in the old sense of the word is in this uh, is imagined in the is, is placed in this hierarchical and also divisional and very unequal and unjust uh, uh, paradigm of the, the the city dominating the countryside and the industrial class being more progressive than the peasantry. So the peasantry, as we understand it, is in that kind of model, and yet in the model of the um, uh, of the common, then the, the people producing food, and everyone should be doing that, uh, the food producers uh, would be, and the life givers, shouldn't they be the agents, the main agent of revolution, of survival, whatever we call it? So, uh, so uh, well, I think MP would call them Ruben producers. He combined the word rural and urban into Ruben. And Ruben and urban is not the general concept that we have uh, in the antagonism. It is one. It is one entity. You are both a rural and an urban producer and a, 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 a person living there. And then very quickly, my last point is um, we, have, we also talked about, debated on the question of rights uh, in our forum. But I think the question of rights, um, it is uh, also part of the whole paradigm of um, uh, capitalism, etc. So in, the, in our imagination for the common, then I think the, 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 divide, the um, decisive uh, uh, keywords should be trust and cooperation. Because we need to be, have, and this, it is uh, a, an, a, an imagination for interpersonal and interdependent relationships. And through 
uh, and this is not just a one go thing, it is through a sustained uh, period of living and working together. And, and from this, we can evolve a pattern of managing the common. So trust and cooperation, uh, instead of uh, the talk about rice, although I don't reject um, the idea of rice because we may be using these terms uh, differently. So uh, my last word is um, do not reject uh, utopia. We need that uh, to continue with our hope, to fight despair. And uh, I feel that uh, when we are also, uh, if we are also capable of seeing all the courageous and bold endeavors uh, existing today, then we can imagine the future. Thank you.